Number 41, letter A. The Sun orbits the Milky Way galaxy once each 2.6 times 10 to the 8 years, with a roughly circular orbit averaging 3 times 10 to the 4 light years in radius. A light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. Calculate the centripetal acceleration of the Sun in its galactic orbit. Okay, so, um, all right, so here's our picture. Here's the Sun. Here's the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and it's rotating around that center um, at this rate, right? They told us every, it takes um, 2.60 times 10 to the 8 years to make one revolution. All right, so this is the revolutions per time. Uh, so this would be the angular velocity. We just don't have the right units, right? We need radians and we need seconds, but no big deal. We can do our conversion. They also gave us the radius here, uh, but it's in terms of light years. And they did tell us that the um, that one light year is the distance that light travels in one year, meaning one light year is equal to the distance light travels in one year. So we can find that also. But why don't we start by um, maybe thinking to ourselves, you know, what, what might be our plan of attack here? So it wants to calculate the centripetal acceleration. So why don't we start with uh, this formula over here on the right-hand side, right? The centripetal acceleration is equal to the linear or tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. And do we know the linear or tangential velocity? No, we don't. But we do know the angular velocity because they did tell us the time it takes to make one revolution. So therefore now I'm thinking, well, is there a connection maybe between you know, linear velocity and angular velocity? And uh, yeah, there is, right? Through this formula. So what I can do is I can substitute now r omega in for v, okay, because they are equal to one another. So then this formula simply breaks down into, um, whoops, it breaks down into r radius times the angular velocity squared all over r, and then just doing a little simplification, which you don't even have to do, but I'm just doing it here. The formula breaks down to this. This, as I mentioned before in previous videos, it's a good formula to know. You don't have to go through the derivation every time. So now um, I need to know the radius, but remember it has to be in terms of meters. All right, so I got to convert this light year to meter and uh, angular velocity has to be in radians per second. So I just got to do a couple conversions. So why don't we do this first? All right, um, this you might have to look up or you may know this uh, already. Well, by the end of physics, you definitely will know this. The speed of light is a constant. It's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Now, remember, a light year is the distance light travels in a year. So, if this is the distance light travels in a second, how can I find then the distance light travels in a year? Well, guess what? Basically, I just have to convert seconds into years, and then I can find it, right? So, why don't we do that? So, seconds to hours, all right, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, so the seconds cancels. Then, hours to day, all right, there's 24 hours in a day. Man, I, I sometimes wish there was more, right? I tell you. So then the we have days. Maybe we'll go from day to year now, okay? So 365. I know it's really 365.25, but let's just leave 365 to 1, okay? And now just do the calculation. So this is 3 times 10 to the 8 times 3600 times 24 times 365, and it comes out to be a value of 9.46 times 10 to the 15th, all right? And that is now meters per year, all right? So this is the distance of one light year. So one light year. Cool, well, how many light years do we have though? Well, we got this many. So how do you think I do that conversion now? I just gotta multiply these two, right? Just simply take this, since that's one light year, and since I have this many light years, I just multiply them. Easy peasy. So let's just, I'm just gonna do that in the calculator. So the answer, 9.46 times 10 to the 15 times three times 10 to the fourth. So now we get, this is in terms of meters, remember, because essentially we canceled the light years. So now, Excuse me, so now this distance here is 2.83 times, well, let me do 2.84, sorry. 2.84 times 10 raised to the 20, to the 20 
meters. That's the radius. Okay, very good. So that is the radius in meters. And now we just have to get the angular velocity in radians per second. And then we can go about our business. So let's bring that on up here. One revolution for every, come on, every 2.60 times 10 to the 8 years. So one revolution is 2 pi, 2 pi radians. So there goes the revolutions. And now I just got to go from year all the way down to um, seconds, right? So I'll go to day first. So there's 365 days in a year, bye bye to year. Then I go day to hour. There's 24 hours in a day, bye bye to day. And then I'm losing space. I'll go to the bottom. Then you would have multiplied it by um, we have hour on the top now, second on the bottom. For every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds, okay? And the hours would go bye-bye. Hence, you're left with radians per second. So let's just calculate it. So 2 pi divided by parenthesis 2.6 times 10 to the 8th times 365 times 24 times 3,600. And we get a value now of... So our omega here, right, is 7.66 times 10 raised to the negative 16, and that is radians per second. Okay, so we have our omega now, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we can finally plug in. So here we have, whoops, here we have the centripetal acceleration is equal to 2.84 times 10 to the 20th, multiplied now by 7.66 times 10 to the negative 16, and that would be squared. And the centripetal acceleration is 2.84 times 10 to the 20th, multiplied by 7.66 times 10 to the negative, I can, almost can't even read my handwriting, negative 16th, sorry about that, squared. And it works out to 1.67 about, right? 1.67 times 10 to the uh, negative 10 negative 10, and that is now meters per second squared. All right, that's the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. There's just a, it was easy, but just a whole lot of conversions. So now uh, letter B, it says calculate the average speed of the sun in its galactic orbit. All right, so, uh, so let me put letter B up here. Um, so here, uh, so letter B, we got to calculate the average speed, so essentially we're looking for V, okay? That is the average uh, speed here. So uh, let's write that on out. So V will equal uh, R omega. So we know the radius, right? It's gonna be the same values, 2.84 times 10 to the 20th. Multiply then by the um, angular velocity, 7.66 times 10 to the negative 16th. That's a 16 up there, guys, running out of space. So the velocity here will equal, so 2.84 times 10 to the 20th multiplied by 7.66 times 10 to the negative 16th. <clears throat> and we get a value of 2.18 or so, 2.18 times 10 raised to the three, four, five, times 10 to the fifth. All right, and that is in meters per second. And um, yeah, and does the answer surprise you? Well, I mean, it's, it's I don't know. I mean, it's definitely fast, right? I mean, it's, it's that, that, that's moving. You know, that's, that's uh, 200,000 meters per second. Um, but, you know, even though it's fast, remember the distance that it's traveling. I mean, the radius is, the, the radius is this big. It's 2.84 times 10 to the 20th meters. I mean, that's insane. Right, so I don't know. I'm not really surprised by much anymore. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care now.